Hey everyone, Chris here from Military Aviation History and a little bit of a special video today. The US Air Force has just announced that it has built and flown a full-scale prototype of a new fighter jet. Yeah, I know, pretty exciting times, right? Let's have a look here. So this was announced in an interview between Defense News by Valerie Insignia. And by the way, if you're into modern aviation, you should definitely follow her on Twitter. There's a lot of information coming from her way and Will Roper, who is the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition Technology and Logistics. And of course, as in all my videos, the sources are in the description down below. Anyway, there was of course the expectation that uh, now that the F-35 is out, we'd be seeing eventually down the line something like this, a new program. It might be that some people knew that this was happening, they just couldn't talk about it, uh, but overall this seems to have been uh, quite a big surprise. Now, there's a couple of things that are important here before we go into the actual article. First, this is part of the Next Generation Air Dominance Program um, that's abbreviated to NGAD. So this means that this fighter aircraft is not just a fighter aircraft, it is part of a variety of connected air systems. And that just happens to include a fighter, but probably also drones and some other platforms. We also don't know who built it. Uh, whether it was a single contractor or a you know, collaborative project. Uh, and we also don't know the specs of the aircraft. Actually quoting here from the article, the importance Will Roper says is that uh, just a year after the service completed an analysis of the alternatives, the Air Force has proven it can use cutting edge advanced manufacturing techniques to build and test a virtual version of, an, uh, of its next fighter and then move to constructing a full-scale prototype and flying it with mission systems on board. So of course this means that NGAD, I, I at least assume that that is how it's pronounced over in the US, uh, you guys with all your abbreviations is sometimes a little bit confusing. And this is really interesting, you know, because uh, we we just had the F-35 and this is in either already in service or in order with the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Navy, uh, of course with other countries as well, like the United Kingdom, uh, Belgium even, you know, Australia, Italy, there's a whole run of countries, Israel, that want the F-35 and suddenly something like this comes out. It's also interesting because there's also the F-15EX program by Boeing. And this is something that not that many people know. Everybody knows the F-35, the F-15EX is a little bit less known. Um, and Boeing was awarded $1.2 billion uh, this summer, July 13th, I believe it was, uh, for an initial delivery of eight F-15EX uh, aircraft. Now this aircraft is not supposed to be on the same missions as the F-35, nor does it compete with the next generation air dominance program. Uh, but the advantage lies in this aircraft uh, from a quick conversion of the existing F-15 models to the EX variant and production is relatively easy as well. The EX variant has about 70% uh, parts commonality with the existing F-15 Cs and Es. Some of you probably already know the F-15 EX. If you don't, here's a little bit of an overview as well on what the intended role is. Uh, this is a different article from Air Force Mag. Uh, Air Force officials see viable continuing missions for the F-15EX in homeland and airbase defense, in maintaining no-fly zones where air defense are limited or non-existent, and in delivering standoff munitions. Anyway, going back to this new prototype, as I said, I don't think most people expected this. And in the article, there's actually even a mention that maybe the Air Force is trying to speed things up and also to guarantee more financial support from Congress with the upcoming uh, fiscal budgets. Uh, what is interesting about NGAD, however, is that uh, currently what we are seeing in the US is, and by the way, this is not something new. This has been going on since the 60s and 70s. There used to be quite a variety of companies out there that were developing aircraft for the United States uh, Armed Forces. And then over the last sort of, yeah, 50 years, we've seen a real contraction. So uh, companies either disappeared, went defunct, or started to merge. And what we have now is, of course, uh, Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin, uh, we've got Northrop Grumman, and then we have Boeing, which was also made up out of companies like McDonnell Douglas, which in itself was a merger, right? Of course, there's also General Dynamics, but they're a bit of a special case. And right now it's, you know, it's tough competition because everything depends on getting, of course, your contracts and keeping your own platform in the game for as long as possible. But that runs against mounting sustainment costs. It runs against ongoing development costs uh, to keep the platform competitive. And this is although, you know, in the popular conception of things, a lot of people look at the upfront price for an aircraft, like for example, the F-35, and they say, oh no, you know, this is way too expensive. We can't afford the F-35, there's only so many millions, that's, that's impossible. Well, actually, a lot of the costs 
that are involved with these aircraft come later down the line. The upfront cost is just one thing. And then once the aircraft and the airframe reaches an age of, let's say, 10 to 15 years and has a certain amount of flight hours, that's when the serious overhauls start to appear. And that's also when you start you know, modifying the aircraft so it can stay competitive. And a lot of the costs are associated with that overhauling and that just ongoing development of the aircraft. And this is something that most people, I think, don't really reckon with all that much because we're so obsessed with simply that upfront price of a platform. Um, but here with, with, with NGAT, there seems to be quite an interesting idea. Uh, this is not specifically new, but it's essentially instead of developing a platform and then keeping it in service for a very long time, you know, trying to keep it in service for as long as possible uh, with progressive upgrades and constant overhauls, uh, you have quicker development cycles and you have quicker acquisitions and you substitute the platforms that you buy before they start mounting those costs when it comes to overhaul and their ongoing development to keep them competitive. And you just keep substituting new platforms. You might spend more upfront, but you'll save a lot of money in the long term. In fact, Will Roper has ex exactly suggested this in this article saying, the result is a 20% increase in development costs and an 18% increase in production costs. However, the price of modernizing aircraft will drop by 79%, while sustainment costs are basically cut in half. Now, of course, this also means that the uh, sector might be open to new competition and new companies um, and perhaps even new ideas. Yeah? Uh, as the article says here, because the advanced manufacturing techniques that are critical for building NGAD were pioneered by the commercial sector, the program would could open the doors for new prime contractors for the aircraft to emerge and perhaps give SpaceX founder Elon Musk a shot at designing the F-35. Calling out Elon Musk there, I love it. Hey, maybe he's onto something, you never know. So yeah, this is quite interesting, but obviously it's going to take time for the system to change if it really goes that route. It's gonna take time, uh, years. Uh, I certainly will keep my eyes on it. You guys will probably as well. Um, obviously this announcement came only two days ago, so I'm sure that in the coming weeks and months we'll have more information, unless this just disappears. Sometimes that happens as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting because it also gives you with NGAT, um, once again, it's, it's one of one more project out there uh, that, that tries to interconnect systems like fighters with, for example, drones uh, operating side by side. And that is certainly where aviation is trying to head at the moment. You know, if you know, for example, let's have a bit of a meta perspective on this here. Uh, most of you will probably be familiar with SCAS, that is the Future uh, Combat uh, Air System, under development currently by the French and the Germans and the Spanish. Airbus on the German side, Dassault uh, on the French side and Indra in Spain. There's been a mock-up recently and they want to have uh, something in the air by 2040. We'll see if that happens. Uh, it's probably going to take some more time. As FCAS is also part of the next generation uh, weapon system, uh, which is a planned integration also with drones. Yeah, so the aircraft flies together with drones uh, swarming there. It's interesting though because FCAS is in a little bit of a um, precarious state. I mean, it's still going on. You know, the project is still being carried on, but um, the French and the Germans seem to have some competing interests with it. The French certainly have the lead in the project with the so, which is probably not such a bad thing. But the Germans have also realized that the other Franco-German project that is currently going on, which is the main ground combat system, or also known as the EMBT, which is the European main battle tank, um, is a lot smaller of a project, a lot less prestigious, a lot cheaper, probably also easier to realize, but that's just, you know, taking a Leclerc turret from the French Leclerc tank and just popping it onto a Leopard 2 chassis and there you go. Those systems were developed side by side, so you had FCAS and you have also main ground combat system and yeah, this one is just such a smaller project and yeah, uh, there's probably a little bit of ego involved in, on both sides as well there. Um, Anyway, we'll see where that goes. But then, of course, we have the British currently uh, with Tempest as well. That is also set to adopt um, swarming with drones. Uh, the Italians are working with the Brits and this one, which is interesting. You know, there's two competing European systems in the works there. We'll see where that goes. And, of course, with the Tempest, the uh, uh, Brits are also continuing their proud recent tradition of recycling aircraft names from World War II, as if they have run out of names and ideas. Anyway. So yeah, we will see where this goes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me what you think about this news down below. Are you surprised? You know, are you excited? Do you see this going anywhere in the future? Um, I'd be curious to know. 
And yeah, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon or channel memberships. That helps out a great deal in allowing me to make these videos. If you can't do that, no worries, I understand. Please consider sharing the video and uh, telling your friends about the channel. Word of mouth is so important for a channel like mine. And as always, uh, please also consider subscribing and hitting that notification button. And have a great day and see you in the sky.